All right, it's time for the direct comparison test. This one's a bit of a doozy. It's going to take some practice on the homework, looking at solutions, possibly reviewing the video. And as we're going through the video the first time, you're probably going to say, this guy's crazy. He doesn't know how to explain anything. But it's a complicated thing to explain, especially when you're not in person. And I think after you give it some practice, it's going to click and you're going to say, wow, that guy was a genius. He sure knew how to explain this. So we're going to start with kind of a big picture, and it'll seem weird, like, uh, why are we doing this? We're taking an actual series, and we're trying to determine convergence or divergence. And to do that, what you're going to do is you're going to thoughtfully choose a comparison. Out of thin air, you're going to write down another series. Now you'll see that you choose this comparison series thoughtfully, it has to satisfy certain requirements. But once you've chosen a comparison series, you're going to go through an analysis comparing your comparison series to the actual series, and that analysis is going to lead you to a conclusion of convergence or divergence. Now depending on what you're shooting for, you're going to choose this series to either have all of its terms greater than the terms of this series, or you're going to choose this series so that all of its terms are less than the terms of that series. And I'll explain which one you would choose later on. But what I mean by that, let's say you wanted all the terms of this series to be less than the terms of that series. That means if I plug in an n equals 3 for this, that value should be less than n equals 3 for this. The same thing if I plug in a 4, a 5, a 6, a 7, a 4, a 5, a 6, and a 7. And as we go through this, I'm going to use some notation. The actual series I'm going to call uh, A sub n, and the comparison series I'm going to call C sub n. Uh, a lot of times in the calculus textbooks, they like to use B sub n and A sub n, but I'm figuring C sub n will help you realize that it's a comparison series. I'm going to try to paint this picture using a graphic that's not totally filled in yet. But in the situation I'm going to talk about here, we're going to suspect that our actual series is convergent. So the fact that I suspect it to be convergent is going to be a big deal. That means when I think about a comparison series that I'm going to thoughtfully choose, I should choose a comparison series that is also convergent. So let me reiterate that. If I suspected my actual series to be convergent, I'm going to choose a comparison series that is also convergent. So that's one of the big clues I need to take into account when I'm choosing my comparison series. And now's the time for some deep intuition. In this informal graphic, each one of these red dots represents a value from my comparison series. Remember, I'm suspecting an actual series to be convergent, so I've chosen a convergent comparison series. I haven't uh, put specific series on these yet, but we'll get to that later. If my comparison series is convergent, I can think of it this way. As I plug in more and more values of n, so think of this as n equals 1, n equals 5, we're heading along the n-axis, we're heading towards n equals infinity. If my comparison real series is convergent, then the values of each n are going to be smaller and smaller. That's what happens with a convergent series. Well, You recall from the beginning of the video that I'm also going to be choosing my comparison series so that all of its terms are either greater than or less than the terms of the actual series. So in the case I'm looking at right here, if I had chosen my comparison series to have every single one of its terms greater than the actual series, that means if I would plot the points of my actual series, they would always have to be underneath the value of the comparison series. So what's happening here is this. 
if I believe that my comparison series was convergent, and I would believe that because I would purposely have chosen one that's convergent, then the fact that I've also chosen my comparison series to be greater than the every single term of the actual series, what it's done is it's mathematically bullied the actual series into convergence. Because here's what's happened. If my comparison series is known to be convergent, and my comparison series is known to have every term greater, every corresponding term greater than the corresponding term of the actual series, then the actual series has no choice but to become convergent. The comparison series thoughtfully chosen has forced the actual series into convergence. You could look at it that way. So to sum this situation up, I had an actual series. I didn't know if it was convergent or divergent, but I suspected convergence. So I chose a comparison series that was convergent, and I also made sure that my comparison series was greater than my actual series at every n value, and the result of those two things makes me come to the logical conclusion that the actual series converges by the direct comparison test. Sorry if that was repetitive. Let's move on to this other one. So now I have an actual series and let's pretend that I thought it was going to be divergent. If I thought that this was going to be divergent, that's my instinct, then I will choose a comparison series that's divergent. So just kind of for dramatic effect, you would say if a comparison series is divergent, as the n's value grow larger, as the n values grow larger, the actual values of each individual term is going to be getting larger. That's not necessarily true, but you can understand the idea. Now, be, because I suspected divergence, I chose a divergent comparison series, and I should also choose my comparison series so that every single term of the comparison series was actually less than the terms of the corresponding terms of the actual series. That means in a case like this, the actual series would have had its values above the comparison series. And so the same phenomenon is happening. If I've chosen a divergent comparison series, and I've chosen it so that I'm positive that the individual terms are less than the actual series, then I kind of have this mathematical bullying effect where the actual series has no choice but to be kind of penned into a divergence. So I'll try to summarize that in words here. If my comparison series is convergent, then my actual series must be convergent as long as the comparison series always has a greater value for corresponding ends than the actual series. And you can read to see the same type of logic going on here in the divergent scenario. And I put a little asterisk, as long as the corresponding terms are greater than or less than relationship with the asterisk, I say for all n, but technically what this really means is as n approaches infinity, because in some cases you can have this relationship not being true early on when n equals 1, 2, 3, 4, but it quickly, by the time you get to n equals 5, 6, 7, 8, turns to that relationship, and then that relationship continues on to infinity. So there is a little bit of wiggle room available there. Very soon we'll be doing some examples, but when I go through these examples, I'm going to be looking for a comparison series, and some of the things I'm going to think about are, do I suspect convergence or divergence? And can I think of a famous family series that might be a good fit to compare? And of course, I've emphasized this already on this video, this is the type of thing that you need some practice, some intelligent trial and error, some checking of solutions to get good at. Here's my actual series, and I have to go about thinking about a comparison series. Um, well, I kind of say, hey, this thing looks a little bit like that thing, a geometric 
series. Um, I also look at this and I say, okay, the numerator seems like it's larger than the denominator, and it seems like it's going to always stay larger than the denominator. So I have a gut instinct of divergence. In fact, I'm very confident this is divergent, but they can come up with problems that you can't really tell. My gut instinct is divergence. So now I need to come up with, since I suspect divergence, I need to come up with a comparison series so that all the corresponding terms are smaller than that of the actual series. Because the logic I'm going for is this. My comparison series, if it's divergent, it would then force my actual series to be divergent as well as long as all the terms of the comparison series are indeed less than the terms of the actual series. So with this thinking, I will choose that as a comparison series. And this would be the write-up that I have for support. This value, my comparison series, is always less than my actual series for all n. And my comparison series is a divergent geometric series. So what I've put here in math language is summarized by this little graphic. And so I can simply say this is a divergent series by the direct comparison test. Let me take a moment to talk about this part. Basically there I'm saying the terms of my comparison series are always smaller than the actual series. And I put down for all n, and it's going to turn out that's a little bit of a falseness, um, but let me show you. If you're ever wondering the uh, relationship between the two, you can go ahead and do a little arithmetic. There's my actual series, there's my comparison series. And I'm hoping that my comparison series has smaller values than the actual so that it can do the bullying of the actual towards divergence, since I know my comparison is divergent. For n equals 1, 2, and 3, or n equals 1 and 2, there's some craziness happening, and I really don't have my comparison series having smaller values than my actual. In fact, I get an undefined there, so that's pretty weird stuff. But as soon as I get to n equals 3 and beyond, the relationship holds place. Um, each one of these fractions is going to be just slightly smaller than any one of those corresponding fractions. So from n equals 3 forward, my statement is true. So to be ultra mathematically correct, I should say for all n 3 or greater. But then I guess to be uh, good about this, to be ultra mathematically correct, I should start this thing at n equals 3 because as we just showed n equals 2 makes this become undefined and that would make the whole summation undefined. So looks like the math lawyers are going to come math lawyers are going to come and get me. Here's a new example and in this one again when I look at that I'm going to eventually end up daydreaming about a um, a geometric series, just like the last problem, but that doesn't mean all of these are going to boil down to geometric, because they definitely won't. Now when I look at this one, I definitely suspect convergence, because my numerator is going to sit there like a bump on a log, but my denominator is going to grow larger and larger and larger. So when I look at that, I say, well, you know what? This looks like this a little bit, and I know this is a convergent geometric series. Now there's nothing sacred about me choosing this because there's definitely other comparison series that will work in this situation. That just happens to be the one I chose. Now I chose it because I suspect this to be convergent, so I'm going to have to su suspect a convergent series. Sorry, I'm going to have to then select a convergent comparison series. And if I want to do the bullying effect, what's going to have to happen is if I suspect that my actual series is convergent, we would kind of uh, 
symbolize it in that way, then my comparison series would also be convergent, but larger at every term than my actual series, thus confirming or forcing the actual series into convergence. In this case, I won't have to do the math, but I'm certainly welcome to. I can always tell that this is slightly smaller than this because everything's the same in the numerator and the denominator has a 2 to the n power. This is a 2 to the n power. But for this one, the actual series, I always have a, one, a unit of extra value in the denominator, making this slightly smaller all the time or in other words, making this be slightly greater, my comparison series being slightly greater. So I've satisfied the two components that help with my suspicion about the convergent nature of that. And because I'm able to satisfy those, I can now say this is a convergent series by the direct comparison test. In this case, I'm going to show you a selection for a comparison series with good intentions gone bad. I've got this. Uh, boy, I don't know. Would I uh, suspect convergence or divergence? I might kind of daydream about the harmonic series, which has an exponent of 1 on the n in the denominator. And this has an exponent of n equals 1 half which makes it a little weaker than the harmonic series, and the harmonic series is divergent. So I might look at this situation and say, I suspect divergence, and then you know what? I'm going to use this for my comparison series, which is really that, which I know to be a divergent p-series. All right, it all seems like it's coming together. I suspect divergence. I choose a famous series, which is a divergent p-series. Graphically, what I would have is an actual series that I suspect to be divergent, which is bolstered by a comparison series that I know to be divergent. But here's the flaw in this setup. For this situation to work, I have to know that my comparison series at every or corresponding terms has a lesser value than this, but unfortunately that's not the case because my actual series always has 10 more units of value in the denominator than my comparison series, making my actual series always be smaller. So if I know my comparison series is divergent, we're representing it that way, but I don't have a guarantee that my actual series has each term being above the comparison series, that means it actually could be the case that my actual series is converging. Because without the guarantee that the comparison series is always less than the actual series, this sort of behavior is gonna, could happen, which is, means I don't have a guarantee of my conclusion of divergence there. So what I would do in a case like that is either come up with a better comparison series or I might abandon the direct comparison test altogether and try a different type of test. Okay, we've got one final example. I've got an actual series and I'm already going to choose this comparison series and let me explain why. I suspect this to be divergent and you know, maybe I have a good reason for that, maybe I don't. That's the hard part about the direct comparison test. You can oftentimes go down a dead-end path. But I'm just thinking divergent because it kind of looks like the uh, harmonic series to me. So it'd be pretty good comparison to try because I know the harmonic series is divergent. If this thing is divergent and if this thing is at every corresponding term less than the value of that, then that would force me into a conclusion of divergence for that. And we end up with one of those cases again where if I would take the time to write out the comparison of these for small n's, n equals 1, n equals 2, then I would not have this proper relationship. 
but as soon as I get to n equals 3 and above, I really do have this value being greater than this value, which means my comparison series, which is divergent for corresponding terms, is less than the value of this, forcing this to also be divergent. So then I can say I've got a divergent series by the comparison by the direct comparison test. Okay, there's a lot going on here, and it's going to take some practice. Hopefully I was able to get the point across. I don't know how redundant it was, but we're done with it. And now we're on to practice and questions. See you later.